Okay. So can you tell me what a functional interface is? Why they introduced it? So functional interfaces are something that can have exactly one abstract method neither the more neither the less so all those um, all those uh, uh, interfaces is fall under to the category of the functional interface that's one uh, if we want to tell compiler explicitly that this hey this is the uh, our is going to be a functional interface so we have a at the rate functional interface annotations uh, apart from this uh, it is been introduced to import the implementation of the lambda lambdas because uh, lambda is can be uh, is is a, an implementation is a runtime or you can say inline implementation of the functional interfaces nothing else so lambda is, or lambda implementation doesn't go do we don't want to confuse it with other implementation that's why it's only one abstract method has been allowed over there uh, so that's on the achievement or we we want to try to uh, like in the other programming of like the functional programming languages we can pass the function as an argument so that is the intention like uh, there are the, uh, the uh, like we uh, have to just to run time implementation that we can pass and depending upon situation to situation implementation can vary so that is the whole purpose of uh, uh, putting the you can say functional interfaces or lambda expression all together okay so how about default method what is the default method so uh, as a java 8 introduction uh, now the functional interface uh, sorry are any kind of interface can have the default method the objective of uh, introducing uh, the default method is that is the backward compatibility for example they have added a for each method if they don't do is so so for example they have introduced in the list so every rest of the uh, collections uh, also needs to be um, implement those uh, method so they, that's why they have uh, introduced a default method in the interface itself and then uh, what we can do uh, we can just uh, like directly everybody can use it so that the that, that, uh, that reason was the backward compatibility Okay. Can a functional interface have, like, can it have a default method? Yes, it can have. No issues. The functional interface is a clear definition. Add exactly one abstract method. Okay. So, how about Stream API? Like, uh, can you tell me what all the intermediate operations that you have used? Or? Okay, so uh, Stream API is, is uh, just uh, introduced uh, thinking in a mind like uh, people are uh, iterating and they are doing multiple operations and then they are going to collect the data. It's uh, just uh, similar to assembly line where the car is going to be built. Uh, some people are doing assembling of the vehicle and then some are uh, fitting the doors and exactly and at the end of the assembly uh, the final car is going to be collected. In the similar way there are the two category of operation in the stream. One is the intermediate operation second is the terminal operation intermediate whatever the operation in between that you are going to perform for example filter map or any kind of operation that you are going to perform in those elements okay uh, at the end you want to perf uh, want to receive this data in certain format to for that we are using the collect or we are going to print it uh, 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 let's say for each or we can say find first uh, find any uh, max so these are the some terminal operation or uh, methods that has been uh, are there so this is the same uh, stream api all, all, all about so can you use stream to filter out the employee like student with the salary of less than fifty thousand, uh -huh. and okay. and sort this by descending order. Um. Okay. Uh, let me think. Okay, just give me two minutes. I'm writing the code.
yeah something like that that would be the solution can you tell me the difference between comparator and comparable uh comparable versus comparator so first of all um comparable are like all the wrapper classes like integer um, integer double is by default are implementing uh, implement an interface which is a uh, uh, comparable okay the thing is that uh, when you are short them um, uh, you your class have it, it don't possible to other implementation or other variations of the shorting mechanism but if you want to pass a collections let's say collection dot short we have a, a list and comma then we can pass a comparator object comparator is nothing but a uh, various implementation against any data structure uh, that we can uh, write customizably for example let me give you the example uh, for example uh, if we have implemented employee with the uh, comparable then we have to override the method and there would be the single logic of uh, shorting the mechanism okay but if we want a different kind of comparators for example short by age short by name short by salary so these are the three different comparator we can write the comparator separately and uh, write the logic uh, how to uh, like um, how, how to uh, 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 how to short them and then based on that uh, we can figure it out so that's uh, basically all about comparable versus well versus comparator so if you want to create a new custom object and you, you want that to be used in a hash map then what are all the two methods you have to override uh basically there are the two method if you want to a perfect key or in the hash map then it has to implement the equals and hash code so these are the two uh, method that we have to implement it what will happen if you try to put the same key with a different value in a hash map uh sorry can come me again same key with different value it's going to be override the value it's going to be override the value okay. simple okay, do you know what a hash collision is and what will happen if hash collision happens in hash map okay sure so hash collision is simple meaning okay so first of example how it works that we have to understand uh, for example if any key is there and uh, we want to uh, uh, put or uh, perform the put operation first step is it's going to calculate its hash code and based on its hash code it's determined uh, from the reminder the base uh, basically the by default length is of the buckets is a 0 to 15 or the uh, total number in 16 it takes the reminder from there and figure it out which particular bucket it has to go so if they are uh, considering the same um, bucket it's meant it's a hash collision kind of stuff okay and uh, then it's going to um, figure it out whether any already element is associated with that bucket or not if not is going to associate with itself if any element is already exists it uses another method which is equals okay it tries to compare with the value uh, sorry with the key key exactly whether these both keys are same or not if it is same it's going to override otherwise it's going to keep traverse it's just keep on traversing till the next node next node next node either two condition either it's going to reach at the end or it's going to um, just uh, um, uh, find the exactly the same uh, key if it is a find the same exactly key we are just going to override if it is not in that particular case it's going till the end and it's going to create another node and then going to associate it with it so in that way it's uh, handling the collision
Do you have uh, worked on Spring Boot? Right? Spring... Yes, I do. Can you tell me what dependency injection is? Um, actually, uh, yeah, in the initial programming practices, uh, what happens? Use a, a programmer write to, uh, a program or let's say a class and there are the multiple associated class with that let's say C D E and F so what they are going to do they are going to create uh, this um, uh, this uh, 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 this objects of each of associated classes and they are going to use it so what the spring framework says uh, head developer don't do in this way let me know what are the beans that you are going to require in your program and I'll define uh, those beans in as a form of metadata in form of XML or in the configuration file and I, I put it over there and whenever you will require I would be initialize them in an application context or a container and whenever you are going to require I'll let give it to you so this process is known as dependency injection injecting the dependency from outside or from the container to the program so there are the basically two ways of uh, dependency injection one is the setter based and one is the constructor based injection and association can be done through auto wiring so that's about uh, the dependency injection okay you tell me the difference between at inject and at auto wired sorry, annotation. Sorry, sir. At inject and at auto wired. What is the difference between um, both? At inject versus um, auto wire is something um, where um, uh, where wherever. Um, like uh, you have application context and um, of only one particular category of uh, is available there okay so in that way we are going to uh, map or associate uh, the auto wire injection uh, um, uh, might be uh, with the we give the opportunity I'm uh, not sure about the injection <laughs> uh, yeah, no problem can you give me what are all the main modules of Spring and you know, I mean, I'll explain them. Okay, main modules of the Spring is something uh, Spring Core, Spring MVC, Spring AOP, Spring Security, um, Spring Data JPA. Um, these are the mainly, uh, as well, apart from these, there are the Spring Batch is there. Uh, I'm aware about these kind of uh, modules in Spring. Do you know what um, aspect oriented programming is for and what are aspects? So, aspect oriented is. Have you worked on? Uh, I'm not directly, but indirectly, yes. Uh, aspect oriented is programming is something uh, developer need not to be concerned. Uh, apart from the business logic, for example, securities are the cross-cutting concern. Logging is a cross-cutting concern. So it means a overhead to a developer. Transaction management is a cross-cutting concern for a developer. So uh, what they are doing it, um, there are the point cuts and advices are there uh, where you can give the point cuts and based on the then point cut expression, your method is going to be executed. For uh, example, you just uh, you have a, a thousand, a ten thousand of class files in, in your um, project and suddenly your project manager say we want a logging uh, for a certain package which includes uh, around 4000 of the classes so there is another way you just go each and every classes and just put uh, the logging uh, going inside the method and going outside the method but there is a shortcut way you can define your advice 
and under the define you can give your expression and you can tell the in the point cut expression method what to do when this particular nomenclature or nomenclature method is going to be executed so that's that's way is all about the aspect oriented programming and transactional at the rate transactional annotation the transaction management these are behind the scene you are using um uh, using the advices or we can say the the exception the way we are going to handle in a in a in a in a in a control at the correct controller advice that's also another implementation of the aspect oriented programming can you tell me what are all the means uh, available in spring there are basically yeah there are basically the five category of the spring bean uh, bean scope first is the singleton second is prototype third is uh, uh, request fourth is session and fifth is global session <coughs> and what is the default bean scope of sign uh it's a singleton why why a singleton um uh, honestly i am not sure why singleton uh, probably they don't want to create unnecessary objects and uh, uh, because the each time everybody is going to get the pin if a uh, same pin can serve the purpose why to create another one but uh, as the case required they can convert developer can convert it to prototype so i believe this is having there in mind uh, their mind uh, while deciding the default scope of the spring okay so if you are creating a custom object and like uh, can you tell me what you need to do to make sure that it is a single done uh, yes a singleton is simple means that um, uh your object should not be able to create um uh um uh, 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 create the object of the same class uh, more than uh, more than one object of the same class so what you have to do um you first uh, uh, like initialize a static variable of the same class with a null and uh, when you are trying to get those um, uh, instance you have to put those code into the synchronized block and you have to do a uh, double checking and uh, then you are going to return um, uh, those kind of uh, object that's one thing uh, apart from there there are the several breaches are there that you have to take care for example uh, you have to um, write the cloneable uh, uh, to so that uh, nobody is able to clone it and similarly for the uh, read resolve method for the deserialization uh, nobody should be able to create the object uh, for the for the uh, for the same class uh, so th these are the few points that we have to consider while um, creating a singleton synchronization keyword synchronization okay uh, suppose that we have a some a critical resource and uh, or you can say uh, the block of the critical where we are performing specifically the write operation and we don't want any kind of inconsistency in the data in that particular case only one thread should be uh, allowed to go in that critical section and to do so we are using a synchronized keyword okay what is the difference between uh, runnable and callable method uh, uh runnable doesn't return anything if we require to know the uh, status of a thread what with, uh, what went with uh, that particular thread so we can use the callable and uh, under that there is a call method which returns the future object okay so that way we can know that what is the status of the that particular thread okay and what is the thread pool 
uh, threat pool is uh, something um, where like in an organization everybody have a bench so they just created the uh, pool uh, and whenever the projects comes okay uh, people uh, people bring up from the that particular pool and then start working in the project when the project ends or closed they go back again the, the same bench pool in the similar way uh, we have executor frameworks so from where we can create a thread pool and uh, based on that uh, we uh, be, uh, that threads are available to serve or certain uh, task and once uh, uh, they can uh, reuse other uh, other uh, with the other uh, work as well so that's all about uh, the thread pool now what is uh, atomic variable uh, atomic variable is a atomic integer, atomic double. Um, so uh, suppose there are some counters that we want to make a thread safe. So um, there are the multiple operation as like uh, with the atomic va not atomic variables uh, where uh, it automatically uh, internally on, on or internally uh, takes care of the thread safety. So there would be a no. Uh, uh, data inconsistency uh, if we are using these kind of variable so that's the advantage of there without using any synchronized or something like that okay you know what is semaphore sorry sir Semaphore. Okay, semaphore. Semaphore. I got it. Semaphore um, uh, is a kind of uh, key mechanism, or you can say, suppose that we can have we have a critical section, and only three thread at a time is allowed. Suppose that um, think about a hypothetical scenario. We have a restroom um, uh, in a hotel, and we have uh, only the three restroom. So whatever is the thread or people are waiting outside only three person at a time allow to go inside the uh, room so that because only the, there are the three one so it's a it gives a limitation of access to different threads so that is all about the SEMA for okay Do you know what uh, recursion is? Have you used recursion in your um, recursion as a programming mm -hmm. I have used recursion is much simple uh, is a way to solve certain problem uh, where uh, a function uh, call itself okay or we are wherever we are trying to break down our problem and we want to suppose that the merge short so where we or quick short where, where we are uh, dividing our problem into the sub problems and uh, combining all those result into get a one bigger result so all this is uh, known as the uh, for example Fibonacci series also can be calculated through the recursion as well Can you write a recursive code to reverse string? Sorry? Reverse a string? Yeah, you have a string value of. Um, reverse a string I can write, but in the recursive way, I have to think a lot how to do it. Um, yeah, I can write. Uh, let me write it uh, in the notepad first, then I'll paste it.
Can you like uh, explain the process what you uh, just give me two minutes just give me two minutes uh, I'm just in uh, in a uh, just give me two minutes I'll write the code and then explain So, uh, in this way, we can write in a reverse way. Um, uh, we uh, we can pass our string A B C D into the first method, and by uh, first uh, the terminal operation would be when the string would be going to be empty, then it's going to be empty, and if it is not empty, it's uh, just take the first character and it's going to keep calling the another method as well. Okay, uh, the reverse itself. Whatever the rest of the string would be that that would be keep on calling till uh, the last element or even after that uh, would be going to be remaining. So that's the way we are going to um, uh, reverse the string with the recursion. Yeah. Okay. Can you you write it out in the notepad? Is it? Sorry. Sorry. You write this out in notepad, right? Yeah, it's a notepad. Here, yeah, like, uh, do you like? Do you have any rough sketch that you can show me what you write? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Um, just uh, let me share my notepad. So here I have tried. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah, 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 I can be. Okay. Give me a minute. Okay, can you write a program to find the duplicate characters in the string? Okay. Duplicate characters in the string, right? Yeah. It's, uh, how many duplicates are there? Like mm -hmm. The characters, whatever is there. Mm -hmm. sure. That can be multiple characters also.
so this would be uh, the logic I uh, like um, I'll just um, uh, take out uh, uh, the string as a string array and each time I'm going to put uh, them in a map which is a counter map and uh, I'll also check whether key is already exist or not if it is not exist I will add those character and initialize with the one if it is already there what I am going to do it I'm uh, I'm just uh, add, overriding with the key with the newly updated value already existing value plus one and at the end I'm just going to the print uh, the map which is um, which is uh, having a, a value greater than one which means those, those are the uh, duplicates and it also tell you the occurrences of uh, the duplicate how much they how many times they have been appeared over there Okay. 